Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about working with AWS inside of Python with the SDK known as Boto3. So we're going to keep it pretty simple how to get it set up and we're going to upload a file to AWS S3 and then we'll go into AWS, make sure it worked and we'll be good to go. So pretty much this is just a really complicated way of uploading a file to the internet, but it should get you started for more complex applications. Now I did just release a video on how to set up the AWS CLI, which can be handy and can make this process a little bit easier. But if you didn't check out that video, you can start with this one. Pretty much the summary is that you're going to need to go into AWS and go into security credentials to generate an access key. When you create that access key, you're given the access key ID as well as the secret key. What is this for and what are you supposed to do with it? Well, it allows you to work with the resources inside of AWS from your local computer, either through the terminal or through Python code. So what you're gonna do with this is you're going to put this in a file in .aws credentials, and it's gonna look something like this. This process can be done automatically for you if you are using the AWS CLI, as I talked about in the previous video, which you can install on Mac. There is also Linux and Windows as well, but for Mac, here are the two commands you need to install it. Once that's installed from the terminal, you should be able to say AWS configure, paste that there, followed by your secret access key. I'll paste that there. Default region name, US East 2 is fine. That's Ohio. And JSON for the default format is great. That's going to create those files automatically. So you should be able to go to this location and see that. CD.AWS and then cat credentials. And you can see those values there. This will allow the code for Boto3 to automatically work. So now, Inside of Python code, what we can do is we can say import Boto3, and to get the Boto3 installed, you can say pip3 install Boto3. That's going to install, which will allow you to use this import. So now that this is imported, we can get a reference to whatever we're trying to work with. We'll just say S3 by saying Boto3.client, and then pass in a name such as S3. And there's a lot of different resources you can work with. So now to refer to our S3 inside of Amazon, we just use this S3 variable. So we're going to keep this really simple to start with, and then we can expand on it. We'll just say S3 dot upload underscore file. And in here, it takes a few arguments. The first being the file. We'll just pass in a path there. And then the name of the bucket to upload it to, which I'll talk about how to get that in a second. So I'll just leave a placeholder for that as well. And then the final thing is the object name, what we want to call it. I'll leave a placeholder for that as well. So this is the shell. Now we just got to fill in some information. So the very first thing is a file. I think an easy way to get this is to just grab a file, such as my dog named Valerian. You can see he's eating this limited edition stuffed animal, but whatever. We can just drag that to the terminal and it'll show the path and we'll just copy that. So I'm going to paste that here and that's the file we want to upload. Then for the bucket name, I'll talk about that in a second. For the file name, we'll just call it the same thing. Uh, Valerian.jpg. So let's talk about this bucket name. You can create buckets all from code if you wish. We're not going to go through that process. Honestly, this is way easier to go do it inside of the AWS website, or you could get some practice with the CLI if you wish, but pretty much we're going to go to S3. From here, you can hit create bucket and give it a bucket name. This is basically a folder. You can think of it as that, which can contain all kinds of files. So this bucket name here has to be unique across AWS. If you watch SpongeBob, my first thought was chum bucket but unfortunately that was already taken so I just started picking random names until I found something so I'll just go with Valerian picks we'll see if that one's taken cool now I didn't change any of the settings this one was made in Virginia but I don't think that's gonna be a problem so we can take that name and use that in our code we will paste that right here so let's just make sure this works we'll open the bucket see that there's nothing in there we will hit play, get no response, but now if we go back to AWS, we do a refresh, 
and you can see we got valerian.jpg. Sweet, so it looks like it worked and we can just go in here, double check that the file is in AWS, downloaded it, and it indeed worked. Now, if you get an issue here, such as Boto3 not recognized, then you messed up the pip3 install. If you get something saying that you don't have access to the, this bucket, then you need to go work on your security credentials. If you get a permission error, it might be that your IAM user inside of AWS has limited permissions. So you can see you got these different users and I just created mine as an admin with full privileges so I can do anything I want. However, if you're working for a company or you just trying to keep things secure, you may have prevented yourself from uploading a file to S3. So those are the three issues you could run into that I can think of. Here is a more built out example of the same thing from the Boto3 docs, where basically they built a function doing this. If there is an issue, it's within a try, so it'll catch that and return false. As for the file name, they use os.path.baseName, which will get the file name, basically the very ending of this path that we've been using. And that's because the object name is optional. If you don't pass a new name, it'll just use the, the one it already has. And you could invoke this function as many times as you want. That's the absolute basics of working with AWS in Python. Probably build upon this because, I mean, that was literally like three lines of code. So hopefully it got you started and got you pointed in the right direction. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes. If you want to know more of the basics of Python, I do have a course. I'll leave a link in the pinned comment and in the description. And let's see where we can go with this. I think we could probably make some cool stuff. Thank you. Peace out.